Most nonprofit leaders underestimate the value of the year-end call. I'm hoping that's not you. Keep watching for tips and tactics to make a terrific year-end call. The year-end call is perhaps the most overlooked and undervalued tactic in the year-end arsenal. People consider it a touch point in the strategy, but often either forget to employ it or intentionally leave it out because it is too confrontational. It requires work and it requires planning and it requires courage. But those who utilize the letter phone strategy see a 28% increase in response rate to your end appeals. I hope you watched my recent video dealing with writing a great year end appeal letter. If you didn't, click the link above and watch the video. But the letter and phone strategy is like peanut butter and jelly. The two just go great together. There are four steps that lead to a terrific year-end call and will ultimately turn your year-end campaign from just a success to a great success. Let's get started. Step number one, determine who to call. The contents of a call are extremely important and we'll get to that in a minute but who to call at year end is equally important even though it would be nice to call every donor at year end for most if not all organizations it's just not feasible writing everyone is easy as it can be done in bulk but calling everyone is never easy unless you hire a service and that's very expensive and definitely not as personal as a call from a key organizational leader board member or staff member and you also have a select group of people you want to visit and you need to have time and energy left over to see those donors as those are probably going to be your most fruitful times like so many of the targeted efforts mentioned in my videos, I recommend calling at least a portion of the critical few, the 20% of the donors that make up 80% of your income. You'll want to call the lower portion of that list and visit the remaining portion at year end. Depending on the number of donors that is, you may want to visit all of those donors and drop down to the next 10% and call those individuals. Just know that you can call more people than you can see. Step number two, preparing for the call. Preparation for calling can be extremely important because you want to maximize your time that is set aside to call. You don't want to spend too much time calling wrong numbers or have to leave too many voicemails. You'll want those staff or volunteers who are gifted administratively to sift through your calling list to verify phone numbers, mailing and email addresses and gather correct giving histories on each donor. You can verify addresses when you're on the phone with someone, but you can't verify phone numbers then. Those must be done before you call. I can't tell you how frustrating it is, especially if you're using volunteers, to try a dozen numbers and have all or many be wrong numbers. It, it seems like it's a waste of valuable time. Giving information should be verified as that will be used in setting giving amounts for the letter and used when challenging on a call. If someone has been involved in areas in addition to giving, like attending a walk or jogathon, evening or weekend gathering, or volunteering, that contribution of time and effort can be recognized and appreciated on the call. Step number three, who will call? It's important to know that if you're doing the calling campaign internally, you get the right people to make the call. When you hire a professional company, part of the reason the cost is so high is that they use trained callers who are used to calling deep into the list for hours at a time. Your team will most likely not have that kind of experience and will need help in the area of motivation and determination. You want to recruit winsome, affable people who are outgoing by nature and love talking to people on the phone. While some people get drained after talking to people for an hour, others are energized. You want the latter calling at your end. You want people who are familiar with the mission, vision, and values of the organization as they will represent the organization when calling. They will be a reflection of the organization. For some donors, this caller may be the first person they ever talk to from your organization, and they will set the tone for current and future giving. If there's a connection on the call, the conversation will be warm and friendly and may lead to a gift now and in the future. If the call does not go well, it might be quick and curt and may not produce a gift now or ever again. No pressure on that. Being familiar with the mission, vision, and values does not mean they have to have an answer for every question asked, but they should commit to getting an answer to the question. 
Too often, questions are never answered and donors lose interest because they feel as though their interests are not valued. It's not wrong to screen callers using role play. Actually call someone at their home and role play how they deal with donor questions. Earlier this year, I interviewed a very warm and affable person for a position on our mid-level team. She responded to all of our questions in a friendly manner, and she looked like a shoe-in for the position. But then we moved to the role play, and she literally froze. She couldn't answer a sim single question and couldn't think quickly on her feet, a critical asset to any good caller. It became an awkward situation that I and a colleague literally had to give her things to say just to finish the conversation. One of the most delightful interviews quickly turned into one of the most uncomfortable interviews I'd ever experienced. But it reminded me just how important the role play is in getting the right caller for a year-end campaign. It is also very important that the caller you use feels comfortable discussing money and giving. I've found callers who love discussing every topic on the planet, including controversial topics, which is something to avoid, but was scared to death when asked to discuss opportunities to give. They just were not going to do it, and they had to be disqualified. Step number four, what will be said on the call? What is said on the call is as important as who makes the call. A script should be written highlighting specific subject matter and how to respond when the donor says one thing or asks another certain question. Scripts will give the caller confidence when memorized, help make the caller feel relaxed during the conversation. Some feel it confines people, actually it gives them freedom. I'm not recommending reading word for word a script, but it must be practiced to the point that it feels normal and comfortable and becomes second nature. The better people know a script, the more freeing it becomes. A good script includes an introduction, an explanation of the opportunity, and a call to action. If you need help with the exact content of a script, click the link above and watch my video entitled Fundraising Calls and Visits in 2020. A phone call following a letter is the most comfortable and effective strategy. The donor is first asked if they recall receiving the letter. If they did, then ask if they decided how much they're able to give. It's that simple and straightforward. You can move right there then. Those words are very important because you aren't asking if they are able to give, but how much. This plants the seed that you're expecting a gift. The second sounds like you're surprised if they decided to give. If they didn't recall receiving the letter, then explain the contents of the letter, focusing on the specifics of the opportunity and unpack the call to action, the specific amount we'd like them to give and ways we'd like them to give. Then ask, how much will you be able to give? Once again, not can you give, but how much will you give? In both cases, wait for the answer. Let them ponder the question, don't interrupt, because those who do find little success, they may say they need to think or pray about the decision, so give them that opportunity. That's fine. Be sure to lock in, though, a time to get their decision. Don't leave reaching back in their court. Let them know that you're busy, and thus, I'd like to call you back. And immediately suggest options until a specific day and time is agreed upon. Should someone wish to give immediately, find out how that gift will come. Direct them to a website or text to give option or text or email them an address to mail the check. Getting the gift immediately through a credit card gift or on a give site is always the best. Thank them for the gift if they gave or made a commitment or thank them for their time if they needed more time or decided not to help. If you're a faith-based organization, ask them if there's anything you can pray for them about. Either way, close with a warm greeting. Now, if you get a voicemail, that's not a bad thing. A voicemail can be a great opportunity for you to at least leave a message and share with them that you'd like to talk with them. I wouldn't ask about the opportunity in the voicemail on the first couple times you call. Just ask them if they could call you back. On the third, I would go ahead and share with them the opportunity. But know that in this day and age, many of what you get will be voicemails. So know that that is not a bad thing to happen. Calling donors on the heels of a letter is one of the most effective strategies in your arsenal at your end. As I said earlier, this will increase the response rate by about 28% and surely increase giving year in and year out. 
it is so easy to simply send a letter and email and finish your year-end efforts with that and you may do fine but if you really want to see your income soar call and visit right after i hope you found this video helpful if you did don't forget to hit the like button and add a comment below if there was something you especially liked I'll be releasing more year-end videos between now and December 31st, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when the next video is released. And remember, if you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. On Instagram, you can reach me at Dev Effectiveness Strategies or email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you next time.